Hi everyone, I'm Father Thomas and welcome to Monkworks. Uh, for the observant among you, you probably notice that this isn't my shop. Instead, we're in my office. In the Rule of St. Benedict, it talks about that the abbot is supposed to provide absolutely everything that the monk needs, which of course includes then a knife. Now, when the time that Benedict was writing the rule, the knife was a common utility item that everybody used on a day-to-day -day basis multiple times during the day. Well, Benedict expects it of a monk, so it's about time that I remedied its absence. So why don't you join with me as I build my monk's knife. As I was getting started with planning the knife, I wanted to make sure that I found something that was different than a lot of the other knives I've seen people making. And so, as I was searching around for images on the internet, I came across this 14th century manuscript of a monk's knife. I very much liked the shape, and so I decided that that's what I wanted to go with. In order to make sure that I had everything in proportion, I ended up blowing up the picture on a photocopier multiple times uh, until I got one that seemed to be able to fit in my hand and then I used that to put onto the tracing paper. I simply traced the pattern out onto an old used saw blade and begin the process of cutting it out. process of refining it to a much cleaner shape. One of the things that you're noticing here is that I do have a jig rigged up. The jig was actually quite easy to make. I knew that I wanted a 30 degree edge on my knife and so I simply cut a 15 degree cut into a block of wood and was then able to attach it to my belt sander. Now I did have some problems with using this particular method because of the extreme curve that was in the blade itself. And one of the things that you may notice in a couple of shots throughout the course of the video, on one side, a little bit closer to the handle area, there is an extra little divot that happened when I was trying to make sure that we had a clean, even grind across the entire of the blade. One of the things I noticed in some of the knife making videos that I saw was they would often use propane torches in order to make sure that the blade got hot enough in order to be able to temper it. I tried this method at first and it just was not working at all. I never could get the blade really hot enough. And so I decided that I was just going to create a fire out of some scraps that I had and really push it into the coals to make sure that it got heated up. After quenching the blade and cleaning it up for a little bit, I did go ahead and make sure that it was properly tempered. Now the wood that you're seeing used here for the scales is actually a bit of walnut that was given to me by John over at the Polyrite Workshop. It came down to Columbia when I was there last year while he lives up in Kirksville, which isn't that far of a drive. And the wall that I thought was just extremely beautiful once you cut into it and saw the green that was there. Began to notice that a crack had opened up between. 
between the wood and the blade itself, and so I needed to wedge some epoxy in between the blade and the handle to make sure there was a good bond overall. I did my best to make sure that the squeeze out wouldn't be that noticeable, but still there was going to be some, and so I needed to clean it up with a hand chisel. I finished shaping it on the belt sander and then hand sanded it all the way up to 600 to make it nice and smooth. After I finished sanding, I then needed to apply the finish and I decided to go with the tongue oil. I applied several coats of the tongue oil, making sure that I was buffing as I was going along. Seems the only thing left now at this point is to make sure that it's nice and sharp, and so I spent a little bit of time with my water stones. I don't make any claims to be an expert in sharpening, but I did make sure that the blade was sharp enough in order to perform. Well, that was certainly something different for me. It's certainly not perfect in every way, but I think it turned out quite nice overall. I'm sure they don't want me carrying it around like this, so perhaps I've got a sheath project upcoming that I didn't know about before. Again, thank you for watching, and may God bless you.